So let's talk about insertion Achilles tendinopathies. Um, first of all, these are very, very common, but often misdiagnosed and people don't realize there are other causes of insertion Achilles tendinopathies. The primary cause is a traction injury occurs in many runners and that can lead to Achilles tendinopathy at the insertion. So it's pain at the insertion here. Other causes include a retrocalcaneal uh, bursa, which is inflamed, uh, which is what we have here. But we also have something else here, which is a seronegative arthropathy. So this can occur from conditions like writer's disease, like uh, even uh, ulcerative colitis, which is an autoimmune disease, um, other types of autoimmune diseases that can also lead to it. Now, when it's seronegative, it becomes a bit more difficult. So the patient might present with a small patch of psoriasis, which is what this patient has, um, might get some swelling in the fingers, which this patient has, and may get bone edema, so might get swelling around the actual bone itself. Um, we did a plantar fascia injection on the other foot, and now we're doing a retrocalcaneal bursa injection on this foot to try and ease the pain from the retrocalcaneal bursa. But this can occur in seronegative arthropathies, and you should have this as a red flag. So if a patient presents with a uh, swelling in multiple joints so they're getting fingers that are swelling up so they're getting back pain which is non-mechanical related and it's an inflammatory back pain that should also set some alarm bells ringing you should be asking about other questions you should be asking other questions also um, so oftentimes it's not diagnosed or it's, uh, it's the patient hasn't understood that this can be leading to other pathologies now, with a insertion Achilles tendinopathy, generally speaking, the conservative measures would be laser, uh, extracorporeal shockwave treatment. You can do acupuncture, orthotics with heel lifts, uh, exercises, all of that we've tried. Um, the non-conservative treatment measures consist of injections primarily. This patient also has a posterior lateral bump. Swelling uh, and exostosis on the lateral aspect of the calcaneum. This should not be confused with the Haglund's deformity, which is completely different. To, differ to differentiate between the both, you should do a lateral weight bearing x ray or an MRI. You, and uh, there are many different ways to measure it. At the moment, there's an angle, angle of brink, which is commonly used. Um, but it, it can tell you if there is an enlargement of the posterior superior aspect of the calcaneum or if it's just a, a posterior lateral bump, which is also called a um, You can also get enthesophytes, uh, which are uh, cal calcium or extra bone from uh, at the insertion, which can also make it very uncomfortable. Um, we're going to do a scan and then we'll talk a bit more so about what this. What I'm going to show you right now is that's the insertion of the Achilles tendon, just there. Uh, you can see enthesophytes, which are extra pieces of bone or calcium, which have accumulated at the enthesis, which is the insertion of the Achilles. Now, the actual retrocalcaneal bursa is quite inflamed. It's just there, there. So there's quite a lot of inflammation there. Let's put the color doppler on and see if there's and you can see there's quite a lot of inflammation there. that's what's leading to it. Now, the ideally he needs to be sent to rheumatology and he's on a waiting list to go to rheumatology. What we're trying to do is get him out of pain uh, for now because he's going on Umrah, which is a religious um, journey for Muslims to Saudi Arabia. And I want him to be able to walk uh, pain free as much as possible. Um, but ultimately, he's going to need a room to see a rheumatologist and he might need to be put on some medication like DMARDs or something else uh, that will alleviate the long-term symptoms that this patient exp is experiencing. So a retrocalcaneal, an injection into the retrocalcaneal bursa of the Achilles 
can be really helpful if you have a posterior lateral bump and pain from that because you can't really inject the posterior lateral bump in fact you really shouldn't be injecting the achilles tendon at all so you want to be injecting if you do a mid portion achilles injection you want to do it into the kegas fat pad i do a lot of high volume image guided injections for that i do a couple every week um, for the retrocalcaneal bursa um, i tend to do the retrocalcaneal bursa because i find it helps with the insertion of the achilles uh, tendinopathy however as with all interventions um, there are pros and cons for doing everything so you need to ensure that the patient has adequate rest post injection for three to four days before they do a rehab choice a rehab protocol of your choice so the alphosum protocol or the silvanacin the silvanagel pro uh, uh, protocol or whatever protocol that you choose to choose choose for the patient um, but a retrocalcaneal bursa injection has a place.